Auto crafters in Minecraft change so much about the game, including the best fuel for cooking things. Let's figure out which one is the best for you. There is 55 items that can be used in order to smelt up items. And down here we have the weakest. These are ones that it takes four of them in order to smelt up one item. And as we go over this direction, they become stronger where we get to the lava bucket where one of them can smelt up a total of 100 items. But these are all not viable ways to automatically smelt stuff in survival. So to figure out which of the 55 is the best, we need to first eliminate the worst. And if we do this a couple times, we should be left with just the best. So you might think it's as simple as just removing the weakest items. Since these items, it takes a lot of them in order to just smelt one thing. And therefore you might think that the best item would be the item that could just smelt the most things using one item. But we're overlooking how difficult it is to get each of these items. Let's say we're trying to get a boat, which does smelt quite a bit, but if you compare that down to a bamboo, it's a lot easier to farm up bamboo than it is to make an entire boat just to smelt a bit more items. And when it comes to comparing different types of wood, we can actually put them on a level playing field. So let's first eliminate all the items that use a too expensive crafting recipe, such as like a jukebox, which uses diamonds in order to craft. There's no way you want to be wasting diamonds just to make some cheap fuel. If we look at them individually, stuff like the stairs take multiple planks to make, so we know that they have to be less efficient than just using the planks themselves, as everything in this chest will produce the exact same amount of fuel. So something like an entire log produces just as much fuel as a single plank. And you can of course break down the log into multiple planks. This also applies to things that need to be crafted with multiple things like your different types of workstations. All of these take multiple planks in order just to make one of them. So therefore we know that all of these workstations are less efficient than just using one plank. We could also apply this to the other wood things such as these pressure plates and gates and trap doors as they all take multiple planks to just make them. Now something like the fence does produce three fences whenever you craft them up but it does use four planks therefore you lose efficiency whenever you make it and even though like something like the gate breaks even use just as many planks in order to make it there's really no reason to craft it into gates when we can just use the plank to get the same efficiency on the bottom row is items that can smelt down for the same amount but besides using wood they use other things to craft them such as like the daylight sensor needing quartz which is definitely not something you want to get just to make some fuel the banners have to use a lot of wool just to make them and when it comes to like the crossbow bow and fishing rod they all need string which is another byproduct so you wouldn't want to be going out of your way to get planks plus extra string in order just to make these but if you do have like a raid farm or a skeleton farm or like my afk fishing farm you can get these as byproduct and use them as fuel they're just not worth crafting your original logs in order to get better fuel efficiency. We also have the mangrove roots, which are really weird, as they only come when growing up a mangrove tree. Now I do have a mangrove tree farm that is automatic, but it's slow compared to getting just planks from another method. And like the log, the bamboo block can be broken down into planks, but only gets you two planks, and two planks is still better than using the actual bamboo block. So we're left with just planks and ladders. So which one is more efficient? It can be a bit confusing, so one thing that I like to do is take a stack of logs and then convert them down into one of the types. So let's first convert it down into planks. We can see we get four stacks of planks. Now if we take that exact same log, but instead convert it down into all ladders, let's go ahead and do that. First converting them into sticks, then the sticks into ladders. We can see that we're actually going to end up with less than four stacks of ladders. And since every ladder produces the same amount of fuel as a plank, we might as well just kept them as plank and had a total of four stacks rather than less than four stacks when it comes to the ladders. So after going through everything in this chest here, the only good contender is just a plank. And we can farm up planks by using a variety of different types of tree farms such as my simple azalea tree farm where the player AFK is planting in saplings. I also have a playerless version which doesn't even need you to be there planting any saplings and we'll take a look at the pros and cons of each of these a little bit later on. Next up, let's take a look at this chest here, which has a lot of wood things, so we can easily compare it to the wood plank, which you already know is pretty good, as it can smelt one and a half items, where everything in this chest can only smelt one item, and we know all these tools take multiple planks in order to make, and even though the door can give you multiple doors, it still takes way more planks than it will provide. Same thing with the signs, as they're really expensive on planks. So we can eliminate everything from this chest, as it is worse than just having a plank. The next weaker one is the slabs. These are all types of wood slabs, and each of them can only smelt up three-fourths of a total item. But these slabs here are just actually half as much fuel as a full block. And as you probably know, you can get two slabs out of every plank, 
So having two slabs is equivalent to having one plank, and we just might as well not do the extra crafting recipe and just stick with our plank. Therefore, we can also eliminate all slabs. Now, boats are also made out of planks, and as you can see, it, each boat does smell quite a few things, being six items, but the boat recipe itself takes five planks in order to just make a single boat. And if we took those five planks and we just used them to smelt stuff, each giving 1.5, we would get slightly more smelt uses out of those five planks rather than turning it into the boat, meaning boats are less efficient than just using raw planks. And when it comes to things that can only smelt half a item per one of these items, we also have a lot of wood related things, such as like buttons, which cost a whole plank to make, a stick, which takes two planks in order to make four sticks, which means one plank would give you two sticks, and two sticks would only give you a smelting of one item versus one and a half with a plank. So plank is still more efficient than using sticks. We also have dead bushes which are non-renewable, so you definitely don't want to be wasting these. Although I really think they should make it so that if you just shear an azalea bush, you should get a dead bush. But for now, they're just way too expensive to use for fuel. Now, speaking of azalea bushes, you can actually farm these. As my moss farm will produce azaleas and flowering azaleas while also producing moss. So since we have an easy way to get azaleas, let's go ahead and keep that one for now. All the tree saplings also work, same as azaleas, although getting these in large amounts means running a tree farm, which don't produce that many saplings, so it's definitely better to go with azaleas over the other types of saplings. We also got wood bowls here, which do produce more bowls than the planks they use, although the bowls themselves can cook very little things compared to the planks, therefore it's more efficient to use planks over making them into bowls. And lastly is wool. Now you can get wool with a simple sheep farm, but that would mean you have to have tons of sheep in tons of pens, and slowly wait for them to eat grass to resupply their wool before you could shear them automatically using dispensers and shears. But there's another way we can get wool, and that's by turning down string into wool. Now you could get an infinite supply of string by using a general mob farm, where mobs spawn on a dark platform, and then they get pushed off and dropped to their death. Or you can build a spider-only farm. This is where we have very short platforms where only spiders and spider jockeys can spawn in. And then we have some water which pushes them off to their death where we can collect all the string. But for mobs to spawn in, we would have to have a player AFK here all the time just in order to run our smelting machine. So it would be nicer to have a fuel source that doesn't really depend on the player constantly spawning in mobs. But there's actually a way to duplicate string in the game. Notice that I placed down three string, and then when I go ahead and release this water, it will flow over and break the string. But if I come over here and pick it up, you see I get a total of four of them. So I actually gain one string by doing this. And with just a little bit of redstone, if you come down here, kind of aim at this corner here, you could automate the process of duplicating string. Every time you place in the string, it's going to activate the redstone because you're standing inside of it, which is then going to wash the water through. Once the water breaks the string, it's going to activate the redstone again, and the trapdoor is also going to fall down so you can place in some more. And then you can just place in some hoppers to pick it all up. Then you can use a new auto crafter to craft all that string into wool. And even though you can make a pretty fast string duper, but instead of using wool, we could use carpets. Now carpets do come from crafting wool down into them, but we already said that wool wasn't really worth it. But there's another way of getting infinite amounts of carpets. That's because there are carpet dupers in Minecraft. With a simple setup like this, and when this piston gets powered, it's actually going to duplicate a carpet, and you can see it go flying through the air. And just by placing an observer in here, and go ahead and empower it, you can see it constantly will be duplicating carpets. And by putting in a small collection system like this and some hoppers, we can collect all the different carpets that are being duplicated and put them into storage. This makes one of the simplest fuel sources as all you have to do is build this very small contraption to get an unlimited source of fuel. And because of the simplicity of the carpet duper, you can actually build it in any dimension, which makes it a contender for the best type of fuel source in the game. But there's another type of dupe that we can do using scaffolding. And this has to do with falling blocks. Just like we can duplicate sand using my simple sand generator. Just remember to put in the chest for the newer versions. If we turn this on, it's going to duplicate sand. Keep the original here while putting the extra piece over in the end dimension. So if we hop over to the end dimension, we can see a whole bunch of sand is produced. And this works because sand is a falling block, meaning it's an entity while it's falling. But there's other types of falling blocks in the game, such as scaffolding. After you reach the maximum amount of scaffolding placed, if you place any more, it's going to fall as if it's like a falling block, very similar to the sand. And you can even see that it has a hitbox very similar to mobs as it's falling. 
and then once it hits the ground, it converts back over into a block. Because of this, we can also duplicate scaffolding using the same type of trick with the end portal. So if we would place one scaffolding in here, notice I only have one scaffolding in my inventory. If I go on over to the end dimension, I'll pick up another one, so I have two in my inventory now. And if I break down this one, I have three. So I'll just turn the one scaffolding that we placed down into two more. So you can set up automatic machine, which will constantly duplicate scaffolding, which you could then use for a fuel source in your furnaces. The only problem is we do need to do this using the end portal and not the nether portals. So you're stuck collecting all your fuel off of this obsidian platform in the end dimension. And you can't load the end dimension without having a player over here. So this isn't a very nice way to get fuel for your furnaces. So we can eliminate scaffolding as a viable fuel source. But scaffolding is made out of bamboo, which is relatively weak, but bamboo can be farmed up much more easily. And I have a very efficient bamboo farm here, which once built up, the will automatically grow up. And once they get so tall, we can detect this with this observer here, which is going to activate this fly machine and it's going to come through and easily break them down into items. My bamboo farm is great as it could just have it grow automatically without the player having to be there to like plant in any saplings or spawn in any hostile mobs. So since bamboo is so easy to grow up and use as fuel, we're definitely going to keep that one around. Now let's take a look at some of the really high efficient fuel sources. First up is charcoal and coal. Now you can get charcoal by having a tree farm and then breaking down the logs into charcoal. But I also designed a playerless charcoal farm where we grow up azalea trees without using any players. And then we automatically sort away the logs from the other stuff which it produces. And then the logs get sent down here into a furnace where we cook the logs down into charcoal. So now we have the option to use our logs in order to make charcoal or we can break them down for four planks. So four planks is equivalent to smelting six things where charcoal can smelt eight. So it seems like charcoal is the winner, but you gotta remember to make charcoal, we do have to cook the log using fuel. But luckily when it comes to charcoal, one charcoal can cook eight things, meaning that we do waste one charcoal to cook eight of these, but we end up getting a surplus of fuel. So if we minus the fuel it takes for us to cook up the charcoal, we'll still be able to cook around seven different things with the charcoal compared to only six with the equivalence of a log. So in that case, charcoal is definitely worth keeping around, at least for this round of elimination. Now let's take a look at coal. Now we can get a renewable source of coal, and that is by using my wither skeleton farm. It's quite simple, just having a platform full of roses, and all the wither skeletons will spawn on here and get walked towards the piglins, and they will eventually fall downwards, where the player can kill them with looting, or you can have a dog here that is tamed, will automatically break them down into bones, skulls, as well as coal. And as we know, coal is just as efficient as charcoal, so it is definitely a lovely fuel source to use. The downside is, just like when it comes to spawning in spiders for their string, when it comes into spawning wither skeletons, we do have to have the player ape king in a particular location over here in the nether dimension just to get wither skeletons to spawn in consistently. And ideally, we wouldn't want to have a fuel source where we have to be sitting at a particular farm in order to get enough of it to run whatever type of furnace array that we have. So we will be eliminating coal for the best type of fuel source. And since we're not using coal, we wouldn't be using coal blocks. Because you can only make coal blocks using actual coal, and you can't make it using charcoal. But even better yet than coal is blaze rods, which can fuel a total of 12 things with a single item. Now to get blazes, you could use another fortress farm, or you could just use a blaze spawner like this where we have some extra powder snow so they can even spawn on top and walk off the edge over here as they think they can pathfind on it. But then they would just end up falling through. And they just spawn in every so often and get washed towards the center where the player can kill them using some flowing lava. But farming blazes using spawners is even worse yet than natural mob spawns as the player has to be within 16 blocks in order for one of these to work. And for this reason, the blaze rod is not a contender for the best types of fuel. But better yet then, the blaze rod is the kelp block, which can smell 20 different things just with a single item. And like bamboo, kelp will naturally grow as long as it is within 8 chunks of the player. And it can easily be automatically harvested using a fly machine. Now in the past we could collect all the kelp, and we could cook down the kelp in order to make dried kelp. But the dried kelp itself cannot actually be used as fuel you would then have to manually craft it using a crafting table to actually get the dried kelp blocks, which can be used for fuel. But this all changed with the new 1.21 crafter, where we can automatically push in the dried kelp and convert it into kelp blocks. 
Then we can take those exact same kelp blocks and use them to fill the smokers which are cooking down the new kelp and then any extra kelp blocks will end up over here. Now where kelp was not a contender in the past for the best fuel source, it is definitely up there now. The last fuel source to look at is lava buckets. These things are by far the most efficient. With just a single lava bucket you can smelt down a hundred different things. And of course I have a lava bucket farm where the player can afk in this minecart here. And then they are automatically given empty buckets and they're taken through this huge maze of lava and cauldrons where they'll scoop the lava out and the lava buckets are being collected by some water where you can end up with tons and tons of lava. But as you can tell it's non-stackable so it takes up a lot of room. Besides that you also need the player to be AFKing with the right click button held down in order for this to work. And on top of all of that, it does also use empty buckets, which you could get an unlimited source with using an iron farm. But with these three things compiled on top of each other, this farm isn't going to be a contender. So out of the 55 original different types of fuel sources, we have narrowed it down to the top six. So out of these, which one is the worst? I would have to say it has to be the coal farm. Because in order to make a coal farm, you need a lot of logs, which have to come from tree farms. Now you can make a fast tree farm, but those use a player in order to plant in the saplings, which we already don't want to have a player occupied in order to just get some fuel. And when it comes to the tree farms which are playerless, these tree farms are quite slow in growing in azaleas, then they still have to blow them up and do all the redstone in order to convert them over into some charcoal. Plus, in order for this farm to work, it does need all of this bone mill farm in the background, which is quite a lot just to get some fuel. For that reason, we will be eliminating charcoal, although we'll still compare other farms to it. Now we're left just with five of them. So you might be wondering, since we remove charcoal, which uses logs, should we also remove planks? Because they also use logs, and tree farms have problems as we discussed before. Well, there is another way you can get planks besides using a tree farm, and that is actually using bamboo planks. Taking 9 bamboo, we can produce a bamboo block, and then we can turn around and craft down that block into two bamboo planks. So now we have bamboo planks, but over here we also have just the bamboo item. So now we have two sources of bamboo, one is planks and one is the item. So let's figure out which one of these is more fuel efficient when it comes to the furnace. To do this, I'm just going to start out with a stack of bamboo, and I'm going to convert it all over into planks. So first we'll convert it into the blocks, and then into the planks, and we ended up with 14 and an extra bamboo. So in this chest here, we have a couple different variations of how you could organize them. We got our pure bamboo, we got them into planks, we got them into sticks, and we have the equivalence of logs being converted into ladders. We already know logs aren't worth it, so let's pay attention to this top row here. So which one of these will cook the most things? So we already know that converting planks into sticks is not worth it, as we have tested that before. So it's just between planks and the bamboo items. The planks can smelt one and a half items each, or the bamboo can only smelt a fourth of an item. So using just bamboo, we can only smelt 16 things, but if we would convert them into planks, we can smelt 21 things. So the choice between planks and using raw bamboo, bamboo loses, and we are left with just planks. So now we are down to the final four. So now that we are down to the final four, let's see what is the goods and the bads of each of these and how we can actually farm them up. First off, let's take a look at the carpet duper. Now since carpet dupers are just so simple to build up, if duping is allowed on your world or your server, then it is probably definitely the best way to get tons and tons of fuel. It doesn't really need anything special, it doesn't even need to be a player nearby, it just has to be running in loaded chunks. So something like spawn chunks, which are often loaded, would have this thing constantly producing fuel, which you could put directly into your furnace array. Now the negatives of such a farm is, of course, it's using a duplication glitch that probably will will get fixed eventually and there's a lot of servers that automatically run a slightly modded version of vanilla which will already fix this so you won't be able to use it on all servers. Also if you're playing a single player world some people just choose not to use any type of duplication glitch even ones that are specific to certain types of items like carpet duping. Now speaking of duping let's take a look at another one which could use duping and that is actually getting wood. Appreciating this detailed list check out my youtube membership which comes with perks. Now one way we can get planks is using a tree farm. We were talked about we don't want to use a tree farm that needs a player planting them, but that still means that we could use the azalea tree farm. This one of mine is playerless, so it doesn't use any player. Instead, it will use bone milling a moss block to place an azalea next to it, in which case it'll bone mill that azalea and growing it into a tree. And then we're going to use TNT dupers to break down the tree for its items. Once again, we're using 
dupers of a sort, which is TNT dupers. So once again, if you're using a world where you don't want to allow duping, this isn't really an option because there's not an easy way to take down the trees without supplying it with actual TNT as an item, which is quite expensive for just having a fuel farm. And of course, if servers don't allow it, then you can't use this. Now, one of the advantages to this farm is that it is quite efficient at actually turning bone meal into fuel. Because we do need this massive bone meal farm in order to run it, you could use this bone meal farm to bone meal other things that could also be used as fuel, such as like bamboo or kelp. But out of the three, the best way to use it is actually in the azalea tree farm here, as these logs could be converted down into charcoal, which is even more efficient than the original logs or planks. And how much more efficient is it in using your bone meal, converting it into a fuel source? Well, by putting it into the tree farm instead of a kelp farm, it is twice as efficient, and it's five times as efficient as using the bone meal on bamboo. Another downside to this farm is it does have quite a bit of redstone, although I simplified it as much as possible, both in the self-sustaining tree farm and also in this very simple layout or a moss farm, it does take all these modules, a total of 20 different modules, just to make sure the farm has enough bone meal. And if you use the entire moss farm to supply this tree farm and use those logs to make charcoal, it'll give you 7,700 smelts per hour per this entire farm. But what if you didn't actually build the tree farm and instead just use this moss farm here as the moss farm itself will actually grow azalea bushes on top of it and these azalea bushes can be used directly as fuel rather than actually composting them down and then using them on the tree. And that's exactly what I did down at this end after we collect all the different things that come from the moss farm. I put some sorters in here which are sorting away the two different types of azaleas, the normal ones as well as the flowering ones, and then you can use these directly to fuel stuff. So if you're just using the moss farm as a way to get fuel, it will produce 3,300 smelts per hour per these 20 modules. Plus you'll get the extra bone meal of 4,500 per hour. And azaleas is one of our top four just because it's so easy to farm up using a moss farm. But the downside is it only smelt half an item per bush. And what's a bit mind boggling is that if you actually take these azaleas and instead of using them just for fuel, you come along and actually compost them down to bone meal and then use that bone meal in a tree farm, you can get three times as much fuel by using them on trees rather than actually using the fuel directly as azaleas. But the difference is here you'd have to use a TNT duper where over here you can actually get the fuel without using anything but loaded chunks. Now speaking of tree farms, we do have another one which we can use, which is my self-sustaining nether wood farm. This thing uses the two different types of nether trees, and once grown up, it then will push it aside and make room for TNT to fall in, and it will destroy all of the logs. It'll even destroy the different types of warp blocks, but this does use a TNT duper, which makes it not useful for people that play without TNT dupers or play in servers without them. Another downside is that it does use ancient debris to prevent the redstone from getting blown up. But it is also quite efficient when it comes to the bone milling as it will grow in multiple potential trees, all just with a single bone mill. But unlike the previous tree farm, which needs some help with bone mill, this farm is self-sustaining, meaning it produces all the bone mill it needs from breaking down the different nether wart blocks using composters and then using the extra bone mill to refuel the farm where all the wood is set aside. Now the downside to using this type of farm besides the dupers is that the wood type is nether wood. That's because you can't actually use these nether wood to fuel a furnace. This has to do with these trees growing in the nether and they don't want them to burn where normal logs can be used as fuel but we could also not use the nether wood to turn it into charcoal. It just doesn't get cooked down as well. But there is still a way to actually convert this into something that can be used for fuel. You would first have to turn it into planks, then the planks down into sticks, and then you could use the sticks to make ladders. And ladders are actually considered a fuel source, although it's less efficient than using charcoal or using planks. So using the new auto crafters, we can now automatically craft these supplies down into ladders and use it as a fuel source. Because we convert them down to ladders, we get a total of 6,200 smelts per hour per farm. So we looked at the methods that don't need any players, but have other negatives like being a duplication or just being poor at smelting stuff. But this is where the final two really shine. And that's because, as mentioned before, there is another way to get planks besides using trees, and that is by converting down bamboo, which happens to be really easy to farm up. 
the pistons do most of the work, but if any tall bamboo that falls off to the side gets washed inward so it can be picked up, and it has some redstone at the end which will automatically turn the flying machine around to send it back to its docking bay. While it's also going backwards, it's also pushing off any extra items on top of the bamboo stumps, that way they can be low enough for the hopper minecarts to pick them up. And when the fly machine reaches the end, it's going to activate some more redstone, which is going to power these rails here and send these minecarts off underneath to pick up all the items through the block here. And we have enough minecarts so that they can pick up all of the items as each of these rows is 64 blocks worth of bamboo. And if we let them grow just five blocks tall, we can make sure that there's always plenty of room in the hoppers to pick up everything in one pass. They will then automatically sit on top of the hoppers here and send all their bamboo down into these hoppers down here, which sends them into these crafters. Crafters will put them together, producing the bamboo blocks. Those blocks will then be sent from three different crafters all into this one here. And this one has a pretty simple job at just converting down the blocks into the planks. Because as we figured out, the planks are the best way to fuel furnaces rather than using the raw bamboo itself. And my bigger version of the farm will produce 7,500 smelts per hour per farm. Now, unlike the moss farm, we cannot actually use the bamboo to compost it down into bone mill. And instead, we'll have to use it directly for fuel or as a wood farm. But the downside to this farm is it has to be within the random ticked area around a player. This is within 128 blocks. That is a cylinder shape around the player. And anything within this area can actually grow like bamboo. So although the player doesn't have to be standing in a very specific spot, spawning in mobs, they do have to be standing relatively in the same area, or you can always place this in an area where other players regularly visit, such as like a shopping district or spawn chunks. But it won't actually grow in spawn chunks without players being there. Now you could get away from having to have the player nearby at all if you had a dispenser which were automatically bone milling the bamboo. The only problem is for every time you use one bone mill, you only get between one and two actual growths. Which, as mentioned before, is really inefficient compared to using the bone mill to actually grow something else like a tree farm. But out of the final four, the kelp blocks actually have quite a few benefits. Farming up kelp is relatively similar to farming up bamboo, where the main difference is we have to have them growing inside of water sources or flowing water. And unlike a bamboo farm, we can actually use the kelp also as a composter, so we can compost it down to make a bone mill farm. Now the downside is just like the bamboo, we also do need to have the player within 8 chunks of the farm in order for it to naturally grow up. Now if you would choose to turn around and use bone mill in order to bone mill the kelp, it will only make it grow one time each time. Which isn't as efficient as using it for like a tree farm, but it's still twice as efficient as using the bone mill to grow up bamboo. In which case you could have a dispenser bone milling your kelp and you wouldn't need to have a player there, only would have to have it inside of loaded chunks. Which is a great option if you don't want to use like TNT dupers to make a tree farm, but instead want to combine a moss farm and want to convert that into a fuel source and using the extra bone mill it produced to automatically grow up kelp or a playerless fuel source. But you can get more just by letting them grow naturally. They do grow a bit differently than bamboo, so rather than detecting how high they grow, since they can grow random heights, we base it off of how much time goes by, and an easy way to do this is by using a daylight sensor. Every time a day goes by, it's going to activate a counter here which counts up to 5. If you don't sleep away nights, this works fine, otherwise you can make the counter count to 10 if you're on like a server where they constantly skip the night. Then after the counter gets up to a total of 5, it's going to activate some redstone which is going to activate the fly machine which is going to fly through and break the kelp. And just like the bamboo farm, we can choose to make the fly machine out of slime or if it's easier to get honey, you can use honey blocks. And once broken, the kelp will actually try to float to the top of the water. And at the very top here, we put in some flowing water, and we got this flowing water by putting it in first, and then releasing the floor, which created the rest of the water. The flowing water is going to push all the items up against this wall here, and then it's going to slide down the wall across the entire length of the farm. Once it falls down into the water, I made a water stream which is all on one level, and we'll push everything to the far side here. The kelp's then being picked up by multiple hoppers, so it can take in the insane amount of kelp which it produces. Then the kelp is being moved over top of some furnaces where it's distributing the kelp inside of each of these smokers which are twice as fast as a normal furnace. They are converting the raw kelp down into dried kelp and then the dried kelp is being picked up from underneath of this and being transported all the way around and over here to the auto crafter. 
crafter is automatically putting the dried kelp together and producing kelp blocks, which are then being sent upwards and into this hopper line here. This line then moves them across over top of each of the fuel sources for the smokers. That way we can continue to keep these full and use the exact same kelp that we smoked in order to fill the next batch of kelp. And the way I set this up is a simple way of doing this, although it does waste two stacks of kelp for every smoker, but you can fill in the rest of the hoppers so that the next kelp blocks move down to the next one. After it goes through fueling all the different furnaces, anything that is left over at the end here is extra kelp that is being sustained by the farm. And it produces 12,000 smelts per hour per one of these big farms. On top of that, since it's actually cooking down the kelp, for every kelp that goes through the system, it's producing some XPs which are being stored up inside of the smoker. Which means besides being a source of fuel, you could also lock the hopper underneath and then you can manually pull out one of these items. And then when you do this, it will also give you all the XPs for the kelp that you pulled out, plus all the previous ones that were smelted in the system. So you can see I got up to level 25 just by pulling out the items from one smoker. And this can be done to all the smokers, which makes it a great source of stored up XPs. So anytime you want to, you can just come in, grab a bunch of XPs and use them however you need. So we get the extra bonus of 614 XPs per hour or up to level 21. Now out of all the other farms that we looked at, the only other one which can give you XPs all on its own is this tree farm here as it will smelt stuff down into charcoal. And then you could also lock the hopper and pull it out to get all the XPs that were ever used to smelt up the items. Now when it comes to other types of fuel sources like bamboo, you won't be able to just have it automatically produce XPs because you need something for it to actually cook and you can't cook bamboo itself. So you'll need to combine this with another type of farm such as like a cactus farm or like a cobblestone farm which will have items that go into like a furnace array. My furnace array here will automatically collect the correct amount of items and then we'll divide them up among all of the different furnaces. If I take a look at this furnace array, I'll have the video linked down below. Now you can use your furnace arrays to cook up a wide variety of things from different types of foods to raw ores to actual ore blocks which is better to use a fortune pickaxe on. You can also smelt down gear that you get from different farms like a gold farm and the gold swords as well as quite a few different types of blocks in the game. Some of them are pretty easy to acquire such as like our cactus or even sea pickles. So in conclusion, it really comes down to if you're allowed to use dupers or if you want to try to make it work without having the player there at all. Now that you know all the details of how it works, let me know which fuel source you think is the best for you. Now learn how to build all these simple yet effective farms that I've showed throughout the video with this playlist here, which is all part of my series where I'm trying to design an automatic farm for everything in the game of Minecraft. If you enjoyed this exhaustive list of all types of fuels and the best ones for you, consider becoming a supporter of mine by joining as a YouTube member. Otherwise, you can always leave a like on the video and share it with a fellow Minecraft. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!